So I've decided to record a short video because I'm currently preparing my bike for a trip down to Albuquerque and Sedona. One of the things I'm doing is that I'm changing out the cassette that came on my YT ISO. It comes with the uh, SRAM uh, 50 to 10 tooth cassette, which gives a 500% range. I've never been a fan of the range on one by 12 cassettes. I had XT before, which was 110%, but prior to that, my three by 10 setup was 600% and I used all the gears on that one. And I've always felt that the 12 by had a limited range on it. Well, I'm taking off the 50 to 10 cassette and I'm putting on an E13 Helios cassette which is 50 to nine, and that gives a 556% range. So I don't expect to be in the nine tooth very often, but when I am, it's when I really want it. It's usually when I'm uh, bombing descents where I can push 30 plus miles an hour, and I like to get some uh, feedback through the pedals and actually some resistance to my pedaling rather than just spinning out and just going with it. So I've taken off the cassette. The standard approach for doing that is using a cassette tool and chain whip. And then what I've got here comes in two pieces. And what we have to do, we have to install this bit first, torque the bolt, and then once that's on, we install this piece and lock it in. So following the instructions, we need to place the main ring on. And what we need to do is lock that in there and really push down on it to make sure it's seated well. And then we take a three millimeter, there it is, three millimeter wrench to tighten this up to, actually that's not three millimeter. That's a, oh, that's a four mil. That's why that doesn't fit. That's a three millimeter. Actually, what might be good for this is just to seat it while we're doing this. Push down, and that needs to be three Newton meters. I'm just uh, using the E13, actually, no, I'm using the YT torque wrench, because actually that will work okay for this. Not actually the easiest thing to see. There, that should be three Newton meters. So that's step one. Now the next part we have to do is to lock this in. So let's rotate this around and find the guides. So you see, <laughs> could have just done this as well. You see there's an unlock and a lock, and then there's a uh, part here. So what we need to do now is actually grease. Oh, actually I put this on. I forgot to grease this up. Should probably do that. Okay, so I, I re took this off and re-greased it or greased it up off camera. So we're back to where we were. And then what we have to do, we need to grease the inside of this plastic bushing. And it also says to grease these connection points here, which is where this interface is in. So one, two, three. This is not the easiest thing. I can see this is going to pick up dirt. <laughs> then give that... Real good smearing of grease on the inside. And then we push this on. That needs a really good firm push to get that down. And then we need our chain whip. Hopefully this will work. My chain whip is really ancient from the eight speed era. And I realized this chain doesn't really work with 12 speed systems. What we need to do now is do the chain whip in the opposite direction to what we usually do and pull the cassette over to the lock to lock it in. At which point there's a final screw to put in to prevent this from coming undone. I can't get it on. <laughs> okay, let's... Uh see what we can do. So this plastic ring still wasn't going down. This still wasn't connecting and my attempts to lock it in was actually damaging the tabs in the where it locks together. So I gave it one final try. I took 
a SRAM uh, bare impress I had and tapped it down and the plastic bushing just shattered. So that was a failure. I guess I'll put the SRAM cassette back on for now and I'll follow up with E13 and see what they say about this because this is an E13 XES carbon wheel with E13 hubs with an E13 cassette. It should be easy, but it was not. This was a total pain in the ass and a bit of a disaster. <sighs> not what you want from a 300 odd dollar cassette. I'll follow up on this one when I get some uh, feedback from E13. So I'm back. It's been a long time. I don't even live in Colorado anymore. I've moved across the country. I now live in Wisconsin. And it's been about six months since I recorded that earlier video. Honestly, I kind of forgot about this during the, the, all the move. Anyway, last week, I finally got around to looking, um, calling E13, showing them this video, explaining what happened so they could take a look. And they basically came back and said, based upon what they see and what they described, uh, the problem was actually me using too much grease and I caused a vapor lock between the bushing and the tapered part of the free hub, preventing it from fully engaging down, which is why I was unable to lock the two pieces together. So basically the fault is on me. I will say that it could help in E13's instructions to explain not to use much grease, just the lightest smearing of grease. I didn't think I had much, but obviously it was too much. Anyway, they were gracious and sent me a whole new bushing on the, uh, for the cassette, which turned up the other day. So now I can put this on and hopefully get this on the bike. So hopefully you can see this. There's a slight indentation here. And this is what the what the bushing connects into. And you have too much grease. That's not going to slide in over there. In fact, it doesn't slide in very easy anyway. It is a super tight fit. And if you try to force it, I'm sure I'll break it again. So we need the absolute minimum of grease on this thing. Just the lightest smearing. We'll insert that back into uh, this cassette body, which is where it belongs. This will actually mount there after this is installed again and then we can lock it all back together. Probably make sure that this is clean first. But clean as in having not too much grease. Use my finger and wipe off any excess, particularly on the, uh, on the right angled sections. So that's that part. We'll get that pushed in so that's located. Now just another light smearing of grease. Again, that's probably too much. I'm going to wipe my finger. Excuse the noise on the video now. The, uh, I no longer have a, a workshop in a garage. I am in kind of a workshop area in my basement. But my basement has all our HAVAC system. So we can hear the dehumidification going because it's uh, humid around here. Okay, that should be pretty uh, lightly greased now. So we'll take a look at the instructions. Lightly grease. Make sure this is clean. And we'll put this back on. There we go. So again, we need to tighten this bolt to three newton meter torque. Remembering to push it down to make sure it's totally seated. Okay, that's three newton meters. Now again, you need a little bit of grease just on these interfaces. Last time, I did it on here, and that one actually proved to be a mess. So this time, I'm just going to smear the back end with my finger. Again, I'm wiping my finger clean and just uh, finishing it off with another round just to remove the excess. And now what we want to do is line up with these uh, lock-in symbols on here. There's a lock-in locator. So we need to get this in, push this all the way in, and then twist to lock. I'm going to do that 
not holding the camera. That may be there. If you're doing that, be careful not to bend your rotor. Now, we need to lock that into place. And this time, success! So that time, that went in easy. And I kind of feel a bit of an idiot that I got it wrong the first time. But this is why I do this. You learn from my mistakes, that way you won't do this. So you can see it is locked in here. Now all we have to do, there's a little bolt that goes in there. Another three millimeter. So this one you just do to one newton meter. That's the smallest of torques and I actually did it to about three. So there you go. But that's in. So that's installed and finished. The E13 Helix R. So lesson learned there. Uh, grease. A little goes a lot further than too much in this case. Thank you to E13. I've had an issue before with one of their cranks many, many years ago. Even though it was out of warranty at that time, they came through then. Uh, in this case, they've come through again. With their products, the XCXR wheel set I've had, the carbon fiber wheels have been totally bomb proof so far. And um, their support is, I think, second to none. Yes, things can happen. In this case, mistakes can happen by the user, but the support is there and that goes a long way. So I'm happy to buy E13 products. I've got a lot on this bike, actually. I've got E13 bars, E13 stem, um, the wheel sets, E13 carbon. Got their cassettes now. And uh, I'm sure there might even be some other parts that I'm forgetting. It's all been very reliable so far on my uh, YT Iso. I might do a bike check at some point. I've actually got some new rotors to put on this as well, some Galfa rotors. But I'm not going to do a video on that. Most people know how to put a rotor on. So that's the E13 Helix R. Hopefully it's good on the trail. I won't know until this weekend when I go up to Copper Harbour and try it out. Anyway, look for the videos on Copper Harbour coming up. I'm well behind on videos. I'm going to start uh, actually beginning after six months of pretty much break doing nothing. Um, on this channel, I'm going to start getting back into it. The videos are going to be all out of order as I catch up on the backlog. But Copper Harbour will be coming up uh, sometime in the near future. So subscribe and I'll see you on a trail. Bye now.